Karina, thanks for taking the time to speak with me and to watch this video. Uh, as we talked about, I wanted to send this over just so I can show you how we balance both the on-page optimizations that we spoke about and the lesser known off-page stuff for SEO that all contributes to how Google determines your ranking. So to show you this, what I wanna do is just compare uh, some statistics and I've done a couple of searches. So we're looking at vacation photography, then beach photographer in West Palm, and then also beach photographer in Jupiter. Just took these three and I ignore any of these sites that are just you know listing different types of photographers and things like that. I go to the very first organic, the very first actual business. So I'm taking those websites and each of the search results as well as your own. And I put them all into this tool that I use. And it shows me all the information that Google finds when it crawls your site that it's going to use to determine your position in the search results and then rates its strength and trust on a scale of one to 100. Now, just briefly looking at some of these numbers, you can see why these types of businesses and websites are being recommended at the top of the search results. But let me just go through what these numbers mean. And then as we go through your site, we can talk about what changes are made and how it will actually affect the ranking. So when Google is looking to determine in what order to rank a website, it uses two different factors. The first is what's called the authority or trust that it has in your site. And this basically boils down to a popularity contest because this authority is gained when other domains or websites refer back to yours and then they create a link, which is called a backlink. This acts as an endorsement that Google uses to build trust because others are vouching for you. So to give you a quick example, if say the local news station did an article on their website saying, you know, the, the top five best photographers in the South Florida area. And in that article, the reader could click on a link and it would bring them to your website. That would be considered one backlink. Now, besides those um, press releases that I just gave an example of, there are a lot of different types of websites that can refer back to you to get this link, including any kind of blog or guest posting sites, editorials. Um, another actually pretty important and strong one is called a citation. Now, a citation is any time that your name, address, and phone number appear in an online directory. Those include anything from Yelp, Yellow Pages, Better Business Bureau, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the good news is most of these, if not all of them are free. It just takes some time to find those websites, register your business, and then input the information exactly as it's shown in your Google business profile. So if we just take a brief look at some of these competitors, you can see based on the number of links and number of websites that are linking back to them, how much trust or authority Google is putting in these sites. And that's the reason why that they are being recommended at the top of the list. But if we just take this, for example, Palm Beach photography, we've got two that I pulled up here. This one is first on the list and it's got 173 websites that link back almost 2000 times. Now this one is second on the list and it has actually more websites and almost the same amount of number of backlinks. But this is a good example of how it's really not just a matter of the quantity of these links and websites. It has a lot to do with the quality. So we need to make sure that we're linking to websites that are relative to your business and your industry. And then also that they are trustworthy themselves. So that way they can actually transfer that trust through the link. I'd be willing to bet that if I looked in here, there would probably be a lot of small blogging post sites that have basically no trust in the eyes of Google but they're, they've created links to this website, so it's just really not transferring anything. And that's why even though they have a lot more, the, they're actually not higher up on the list. Now, the second factor for ranking the website is the content on the page like we were talking about yesterday. So as you can see, Google is just not really picking up a lot of keywords on your site. So just to give you a quick example, if we look at one, just to kind of show you how this works. What I do is a lot of keyword research just to find all the actual terms and phrases that are being typed into Google search, the exact keywords. And I can also see the volume, the number of times per month they're being searched. So this is when I go through all the research to find the highest volume keywords relative to the services that you offer and the areas you want to service and make sure that those are being included on the site. So to give you an example, for a photographer West Palm Beach, that's being searched 60 times a month. If your website was on the first page, those 60 people would be seeing your site every month. Now, according to Google Analytics, 10% of total search volume converts into a lead, meaning of that 60 people, you can usually expect anywhere from about six to 10 
actual contacts, whether they're through a form submission through your website, they're emailing you or calling you directly. So obviously, you know, you're not going to get every single one of those jobs and each client might be a little bit different as far as cost and profit margins, but you can just see how the, the sheer volume of leads coming into the business can definitely add up to some revenue at the end of the month, at the end of the year. And then that's just for one keyword phrase. So we try to repeat that same process for all the highest volume keywords, like I said, relative to your service area and the services you want to include, and then make sure we can get those included on the site and ranking. Now, as we talked about yesterday, Google is really trying to emphasize high quality content, meaning we want to make sure that whatever we're talking about has to be something that is going to be informative and educational and something that's relative to the search criteria of whatever somebody is searching for. So as far as Google is concerned, because it's a computer, it doesn't really care what your layout looks like. Obviously, the, the layout for the user experience is big to make sure we have conversions and people are staying on the page. But Google as a search engine is just going to come in. It's going to count all the words and text on the page. Now, generally, we say that we want to have like a minimum of about 1,000 to 1,500 words on a home page, only because the more information you have on the page, the more of an expert you seem, and then the more likely Google is to recommend you. However, it's also basically like any other race. If one of your competitors that we're trying to rank against has a thousand words on the page, we're going to go to like 1250 to 1500. We just want to make sure we have more information that we're offering than your competitor. Now, also, while it's counting all the words, it's searching for those keywords. So any kind of services you want to offer and then the areas you want to be found in. Now, that's really where the number of words on the page comes into play because you can really only have about one word for every 100 to 150, I'm sorry, you can only qualify one keyword for every 100 to 150 words of content on the page. And then even furthermore, in order for that keyword to be picked up and qualified in the eyes of Google, that supporting content of 100 to 150 words has to be directly describing or relating to that keyword that you're trying to rank for. We can't just basically spam a bunch of keywords randomly in a paragraph and expect Google to pick it up. Uh, the algorithm is smart enough where it is actually reading the content and making sure that it's relative because what it doesn't want to do is recommend a website that isn't relative to what people are searching for just because that search phrase might be somewhere scattered throughout the site randomly. Now I want to take a look at this company right here, Hinson Photography. They are actually located in New Smyrna. And even though I typed in Vacation Photography South Florida, they actually still came up, even though they're way away from South Florida, which I would consider South Florida anyway. Um, but they are doing a really good job of attracting search volume and basically pandering to the search uh, from the search engines through proper use of SEO. So as far as the user experience, I mean, we've got these great pictures right at the top, really captivate somebody. Uh, we've got real easy to navigate headers and everything. But what I can say is they have a good mix of content and pictures. So we've got you know a little bit of a bio here, then we've got more pictures and it kind of describes what they do. And then we're talking about different services and everything that they offer. And then it can, they can expand more so they don't have to have a whole lot of text on this page. They can expand more and link out to a different page. But they're really doing a good job of balancing image content with actual wording content so that way they can get those keywords in. And I'd be willing to bet, I didn't look into this, but New Smyrna Beach Photographer, I'm sure that's an exact match key for keyword phrase. Daytona Beach Photographer, probably same thing. It's probably that's an exact match keyword phrase. So they're doing a really good job of sprinkling the keywords in uh, in the content itself. Then uh, what they're also making good use of is having individual location pages. So this is how they're able to rank for South Florida because they have a page dedicated just to West Palm Beach, just to Daytona Beach. So everything on these pages is going to be 100% relative to the, the location specific keywords, which is why we're able to pull them up so far away, even though we're searching for uh, South Florida, they're still coming up. So this is where when we figure out the areas like we went through yesterday with the list, we can determine if it's 
if there's enough search volume or if there's enough clientele that you want to get in that area to build a separate location page just for that specific area. Um, I know you had talked about that uh, you're you're still in the process of tagging things, uh, but this is you know exactly another way that you can get some of that um, keywords to be st not stuffed in there, but kind of snuck in there. Uh, is you know putting the keywords in for the alt text and meta descriptions as well. Uh, I know you've got a lot of photos to go through, and you kind of put yourself on a schedule, which is great, so you don't get overwhelmed. Um, but what I can say is, there we can we can basically do all the off-page work that we possibly can. We can link out to the proper websites that have to do with, you know, vacations, beaches, photography, everything relative to you. But we also need to make sure that we've got the right content on there so that way you can be found in those searches when people are typing in the keywords. And the only way to do that would be to restructure the page a little bit so that way we can get some more actual content on there. What I would probably suggest is doing a similar format where you know, we've got a some pictures and then a little bit of text with it, and then it kind of breaks it up, kind of like what you're doing now, uh, but just making sure that we're writing this with you know proper content and SEO in mind. Um, and then we can, once we get those keywords on there in a proper format, um, then we can start linking back to those individual pages, to those keywords in the areas that you want to be found for. And we can just determine who's going to be the competition in those areas to make sure that we're doing just a little bit more than what they are, so that way your site can come up along with them in the search results. Whether or not it's you know number one, uh, it is still definitely possible to rank on top of a lot of these TripAdvisor and listing sites. Um, that is, is still definitely possible. But we wanna at least make sure that we're competing with the, the organic listings of the photographers that are showing up. The map pack, uh, is your Google business profile. So this is going to be obviously a little bit more location specific, but there are ways to optimize this um, with your listing as far as putting in some of those keywords in your business description. You're allowed 750 characters. You want to fill out as much information as possible. So all your services, the areas, hours of operation, everything. Uh, try to get some reviews obviously is a part of it, but then also getting listed in as many of those citations, your name, address, and phone number. You want to appear in more directories than anybody else on this list. And then a big part of this is Google Rewards activity. So we want to be posting to the profile on a regular basis, and we want to have more pictures than anybody else on this profile. And then even beyond that, we want to geotag those photos with a location so that way Google can really understand your service area. So that way when somebody is searching, you know, maybe a little bit north, Port St. Lucie or Jupiter, and you're, you're coming up for basically all these because we can tag photos, it doesn't necessarily mean that the photo has to have been taken in that exact area. Google doesn't know that. Uh, we can just tag it with the longitude and latitude so that way Google can really understand how far your service area is so it can still recommend you even as it gets a little bit further out from where your actual business location address is registered. Now, uh, I hope this information is a little bit helpful. I know it's probably a lot. Uh, you might have some more questions. Hopefully I answered some. Be happy to hop on another call so we can further the conversation of how we go about structuring the page to get some content on there. And then depending on what areas we want to try to rank in, we can see who the competition is and what exactly we're going to have to do to basically rank on top of them based on your goals as far as time frame and things like that. So there's definitely a lot more that we can discuss. Uh, feel free to reach back out to me when you've had a chance to watch this, and then we can hop back on and take it further. Appreciate your time.